Welcome back from our break. We're excited to welcome Kevin Freeman to the show. Kevin Freeman hosts Economic War Room. It's a weekly broadcast and podcast where financial intelligence meets national security. Economic War Room is a financial news show that provides new market insights to the challenges America and Wall Street face daily. Kevin Freeman has spent decades studying the intersection of economics and national security, and today he's going to join us to talk about the Founders' Hidden Plan for Economic Liberty. Kevin, welcome to Stand. We're so glad to have you with us. Oh, thank you, Kelly. It's an honor to be with you. Uh, I'm so glad to have this discussion with you. I know what we're going to talk about. I've been involved in some of your discussions and mobilization at the state level, but I know that a lot of our audience has no idea what we're going to talk about. So I want to open up with this book you've written, Pirate Money. It's an Amazon bestseller. Yes, audience, you can get it on Amazon. Pirate Money, Discovering the Founder's Hidden Plan for Economic Justice and Defeating the Great Reset. You also can find it on Kevin's website, economicwarroom.com. So for those who may not understand what we're talking about, can you start out with what's the Great Reset? Why are we even going to care about today's topic and pirate money? Well, the Great Reset is a progressive grab bag of ideas that they have promoted to the World Economic Forum through elitists in the United States, actually even sometimes through the Chinese Communist Party, which is essentially intended to take America down as a republic and replace it as just another nation among the world, uh, and really remove America's special status for liberty in the world and put us all kind of under the thumb of the elites. And they're not even shy about sharing it when the World Economic Forum, which is Klaus Schwab and, you know, the Rothschilds and all the big wigs of the world, when they describe it, they say, by the year 2030, you will own nothing and you'll be right. happy about it. You'll eat less meat. You'll start eating bugs. You're going to, I mean, they list all of these things. That is the Great Reset. It is the takeover plans of the elitist to eliminate America as a liberty loving republic. That's a really good way of summarizing it. A lot of people have not heard about this. It's a, a plan, a plan that they hash out in their conferences. Like you said, they're public about it. Um, they have meetings about this. They've been implementing it. And so then we see these um, destructive forces come through, and many would indicate this seems to be right in line with the Great Reset. It seems to be perhaps intentional that this would be for America's um, le reset and leveling, if you will, to make us not a superpower and therefore more easy to control or to be controlled. And our economy is one of those things. And I think we can all see there's something wrong with it. The dollar's crashing. Our credit has been downgraded. Um, we've got a recession looming. There's the onset of a national digital currency, which would be a currency controlled all by the federal government, which means that they can make and take away your dollars whenever they want. Um, I know that you know a lot about that, your show's about that, but that there, you've said, hey, the founders all anticipated this, government control of our bank accounts, and they had a hidden plan. Um, tell us more about that. Well, first, I'll give you a little history of money, because the World Economic Forum is called economic because it's about money. The sure. Bible talks about money. You know, Luke 16, 11, uh, Jesus said, if you can't get the money part right, if you're not faithful with your unrighteous mammon, no one will trust you with true riches. And unfortunately, Americans are obsessed with money. And that's, you know, we are one quarter of the world's economy with 4% of the world's population. So the World Economic Forum says, hey, that's not fair. It's not equitable. We've got to level all that out. But funny how at the top of it, they seem to be in control. And so what they're talking about is taking control in those areas with money. And the founders actually knew that elitists are the same, whether it's the, Brit the British monarchy of the, uh, of the 17th and 18th century, or whether it is the elitist ar aristocrats, modern aristocrats on Wall Street and in Davos around the world today. They knew that they would take and control people with money. So that, that's, the, that's the baseline premise of it. Right. What, what, they, what they did, though, is they put in the Constitution a secret plan that we would not go into paper money. I have right here 
This is a Continental produced in 1776. Uh, it is a $4 Continental from wow. Philadelphia. They produced this and they paid for the war with it. And George Washington once said a wagon load full of Continentals would not buy a wagon full of supplies because even though it was supposed to be backed by four Spanish mill dollars, and this is an actual Spanish wow, mill dollar, 0.77 ounces, troy ounces <laughs> of fine silver, uh, even though it was supposed to be backed by four of those, they didn't have a penny to back up their currency. And the net result was massive inflation during the Revolutionary War, a collapsing wow. economy, great challenges. And that's why at Valley Forge, the soldiers, you know, a third of them didn't even have shoes. They wore burlap sacks at Valley Forge with bleeding feet, crossing to go to the Delaware. We almost did not survive as a nation because we had unbacked paper money. Net result, founders hated it. Elitists, on the other hand, love it. They love a printing press where they can control people with money. Mm -hmm. And their, their goal is to take away our paper dollars, replace it with this central bank digital currency to where it's all electronic. You don't even have paper money. And they can make it turn it on or off at will. They can take it away from you and give it to somebody else. They can tell you you're, you're a bad person because you're buying gasoline. And so your, your money doesn't work to buy gasoline, but it can buy an electric car or it can buy bugs to eat. Or if you're, if you're too heavy and have too high a cholesterol, you can't buy a cheeseburger, but you can buy a salad. It is even such, Kelly, wow. that when they talked about this recently at the G20 meeting, they had an interview and they and one lady came out and said, can you imagine the good we can do with this? If someone's already had two cups of coffee that day and they go to buy a third cup, we can cut them off and their money won't be able to buy a third cup of coffee because they don't need the extra caffeine. And isn't this great what we can do for people? And she said it with a straight face. You know, that's really interesting because at the end of the day, somehow I... I think that in this whole plan for a great reset, those uh, elitists aren't going to be the ones eating the bugs. <laughs> I think they're going to be planning that for everybody else, but not necessarily for themselves. And, you know, what's particularly diabolical about all this is you can see how you could really have a planned economy that's totally controlled by the government if mm -hmm. you can control what people spend, where they spend, how they spend, when they spend. Uh, it's not just about their physical health or mental health. It's also about what do we need to do to make sure the economy meets the objectives that we think are important. And the only way to do that is to stymie the liberties and the freedoms of the people that we supposedly are trying to, to, to help and whose lives we're supposedly trying to make better. Uh, Kevin, you're an expert on economics and national security. In your opinion, what strategies do you believe the U.S. should adopt to protect its economic interests and its national security at this moment? Well, I'll go back to the prior question and tie them together. The founders said that a federal government, whatever they do about money, a state can only make gold and silver coins. This is a partial, wow. partial gold doubloon. This is a silver piece of eight. And when you hear the term pieces of eight and gold doubloons, instantly you think Captain Jack Sparrow or you think Treasure <laughs> Island, you think pirate money. What we should do is we should adopt pirate money. Imagine if you were paid, you work hard all, all week long, you get your paycheck at the end of the week, and instead of giving you paper dollars that could become worthless, your company gives you gold and silver coins, but they deposit them directly into an account at the state of Alaska or the state of Texas or the state of Utah. They deposit them directly, and then they give you something like this, a debit card that you can use, that you mm. can spend in ounces of gold and silver, or you could write a check on it, or you could show up and say, give me my coin. I want, I want my bullion out. That's the premise of the book Pirate Money. It defeats the Great Reset. It, it takes us off of this debt trap that we're on. It's optional. It's individual. It's offered at the state level. It's constitutional. It's biblical. It meets all of the requirements. 
So to protect the interests of the United States, we need to get off of this in hyperinflationary schedule that someday will take us to where Zimbabwe was, whereas right. in Zimbabwe, they were once producing $100 bills, and this is a $100 Zimbabwe bill from 1995, and by 2008, they were producing $100 trillion oh bills. Gosh. And this one had a buying power of $20 US, this one has the buying power of a penny. That's wow. how what hyperinflation does. So we need to return to what the founders said, get rid of this crazy paper money system and $33.5 trillion in debt and go back to real money, gold and silver on a state-based level, mm -hmm. optional to individuals. That's a fascinating idea. And I think, you know, that example and that picture of what happened in Zimbabwe under um, Mugabe is a, a, per, a, a perfect example of what happens when you don't have a currency that's backed uh, by gold yeah. and silver. Uh, let's dig into this a little bit more uh, after this break. We're on stand with Kevin Freeman, author of Pirate Money. You can pick it up on Amazon or on his website, like Kelly said, at economicwarroom.com. We'll be back in a moment. Stand by.